At the end of March 2016, Logos is going to retire its Center Kindle service. So this video is to show you how you can send a Logos book to Kindle even without using that service. The first thing that you need to do is to download the Sender Kindle app from Amazon.com. You can see that there are versions for both PC and Mac. Get that downloaded and then installed. Then go to Logos and open the book that you want to send to Kindle. We're going to be using the print export feature. So before we do, go to the tools menu and choose program settings and make sure uh, copy footnotes is set to what you want, either yes or no. I'm going to leave the footnotes turned on. The print export feature has a limitation of 100 pages, which we need to work around as much as possible. So it's usually helpful just to turn the text size as small as possible before you try and export. You also want to make sure that show footnotes on page is turned off, even if you want footnotes. If I select show footnotes on page, it will show up in my preview and it will expand my preview. If I've got hundreds of footnotes, my preview might be hundreds of pages longer than it otherwise would be, and I'll be over that 100 page limit. If I switch it off, the chances are I'll be under the 100 page limit. Once that's done, we can go to print and export. And again, we want to make sure that we're using as little space as possible. So make sure your margins are set to narrow. Rather than select text, we'll select the text by page number. Type in page. If you think there are uh, Roman numeral pages at the beginning, type an I, otherwise you can press one, then a hyphen and a maximum number of pages. I'll choose 9,999. Logos will adjust that there's no pages 1 to 5 in Roman numerals. We finish at page 338. So Logos makes that adjustment for us. So you can see that we've now hit our 100 page limit, even though uh, we probably won't have all 338 pages. The best way around that is to change the paper size to a large paper size, the largest you can have. Now you can see on my printer driver, I've already chosen almost the largest uh, size at A4. I could choose legal, but it's only very slightly bigger. But if you change to a virtual printer driver instead of your normal printer, and as we've just installed the Center Kindle app, there is a Center Kindle virtual printer that's quite handy for this. If I choose that and then go back to paper size, you'll see that I have a range of additional paper sizes, including for me the very large A2 size. So by selecting that, I now get 100 A2 pages, which are four times the size of the A4 pages or uh, uh, the letter page if you've uh, got an American setup. And that will allow me to get much more text on. Again, I've got to wait um, a little while for the preview, but you can see now the paper size is very much bigger and I'm well under the 100 page uh, limit. So I can export the entire book now in one click, which is much easier. What I want to do is to send that to Microsoft Word. So I simply click over here. I'm going to send it to a new document. It doesn't take too long, and you can see now that uh, Word is flashing down at the bottom to say that it's uh, arrived. So here's my uh, exported uh, document. The entire, entire thing is here. There's just a few changes that we um, need to make before it's ready to send to Kindle. Firstly, I'll go to the View menu and make sure that Navigation pane is turned on. And then I will delete the footer, which we're not going to need. So I've double clicked into the footer, press Control A to select all. Then I press the Delete key and then I close the header and footer. The next thing I'm going to do is to delete all of these links. You can see that these links are to uh, Logos. Obviously, that's no use uh, in a Kindle book. So we'll press uh, Control and A again. That selects the whole document. And then Control, Shift, and F9. It's possible that key is different on a Mac. I'm sure you can Google and find out 
what the appropriate key is. Now, it doesn't look as though the uh, hyperlinks have all gone, but if I hover over them, you'll see the pop-up no longer appears. It's just the formatting that's retained. So they're blue and underlined. You can leave it like that if you if you like, uh, but if you want to get rid of the, uh, the formatting so those things don't appear as underlined in your Kindle document, that's quite easy to do. All you do is click in one location, uh, click on the select button up here, and then choose select all text with similar formatting. Uh, Word will take uh, a few seconds to analyze your document. Once it's analyzed, all of the text that is both uh, blue and underlined will be highlighted, and we can then turn that formatting off. It does take a little while for Word to do its analysis. Uh, that's done now, so I can change the font color to automatic, and I can turn underline off. Now, it's taken me to the last position in the document where that formatting was changed, and quite conveniently, it's also alerted me to the fact that there is a similar format in here, but this time it's in italics. That wasn't picked up because it wasn't exactly the same as the text I chose earlier. But I can just place my cursor in the text that's blue, underlined, and italics, choose select text with similar formatting again, and again, change it to black, and take the underline off. And that's now done. I'm going to go back to the beginning of my document by pressing Control and Home. The next thing we need to do is to add the headings to the document to make sure that uh, the Kindle device will generate a table of contents. Again, for the majority of books, this is really quite easy to do. All we need to do is to scroll down until we come to uh, a chapter heading. Um, I'm scrolling press preface and abbreviations and so on, just in case it's uh, it's different from the main body of the text, which is what really, really matters to me. Uh, let's try and speed that up a little bit. Here it is. So uh, clearly this here is the heading, and you can see it's in quite a distinctive style. So again, all I need to do is choose Select Text with Similar Formatting. That will have selected all of the headings that are like this, and I need to make them into Heading 1. But I don't want to change the font or the style. Um, I want to keep it as close to the original book as I can. So to do that, I just go up to Heading 1, I right-click, and I choose Update Heading 1 to match selection. If you look at the um, navigation pane now, you'll see that suddenly we have a whole uh, list of headings. That's because all of the headings in the document now have the Heading 1 style. They show up in this table of contents. They'll show up in Kindle's table of contents as well. I'm again at the end of my document, so I'll click on my uh, first chapter head in here to go back to that location, because if you remember, there's also a, a second level head in. So I do the, exactly the same thing. I click in there, choose Select Text with Similar Formatting. This time it's going to be Head in 2 that I right-click on and choose Update Head in 2 to match selection. Wait a few seconds, and you'll see again in my navigation panel here on the left-hand side, I've now got two levels of headings just as I want. You can repeat that um, as much as you want for heading three, four, and five if there are if there are that many levels. Uh, but for this uh, resource, I believe there are only two levels of heading. So that's us um, basically done. Uh, the only one thing that you might need to, to watch out for is when we remove the hyperlinks, um, we didn't remove them from the uh, footnotes. Word treats footnotes differently, so even if you choose Select All, eh, the footnotes wouldn't be included. So we'll just scroll down. You can see here we've got an example. So I'm going to, uh, first of all, uh, click Control A to select all of the footnotes this time, and then Control Shift and F9 to remove the hyperlinks. Then I'm going to go back to this, what was a link and is now in underlined and in blue, do my select text with similar formatting, change the font color, remove the underline. That's now taking me to a, a final location that is not in italics, and again I need to do the same thing here. Select text with similar formatting, change to black, and take off the underline. And again, that is now done. 
So my document is um, virtually complete. There may be a few errors in it. Um, you never get it quite perfect, but the center Kindle was never quite perfect either. Um, but it's a pretty good system. There's one more thing I'm going to do um, for myself. You may or may not want to do this depending on what your default style sheet, sheet is like. You can see that um, there's a paragraph space in between each paragraph. I find that unhelpful on a Kindle device. So I'm just going to right click on my normal paragraph style, choose modify, format the paragraph and remove that space in. I just find that a little bit easier on a Kindle device but that's entirely up to you. So now again if we go back to the beginning you can see that my paragraph spacing has indeed uh, disappeared now. So all we need to do now is to save that document. I'm going to save it in a folder called Center Kindle and I'll call it Jesus and the Dead Sea Scrolls and I'm going to replace the existing file. I was experimenting with this earlier to make sure it worked. That's why I've got an existing file. Just wait for the save to finish. You can see it's quite a long document, 142,000 words, so it will take uh, a few seconds to save. There's only one step that we need to do once this is complete, and that's actually send uh, to the Kindle device. That's very simple, uh, as you'll see in a moment. So now that's done, I want to navigate to the folder um, where I saved it. You can see here it is, and all I need to do now is to right-click on that document and choose Send to Kindle. You need to type in the title and the author, choose the device or devices that you want to send it to, and if you want to be able to archive this document in your Kindle library so that later on you can download it onto different devices, uh, make sure that this box is selected. Then simply press send, your document will get um, uploaded. Uh, you can see this is a fairly uh, large document, there's um, lots of photographs in this resource for example, they'll all be sent up um, to your Kindle as well. So all the illustrations are there, all the footnotes are there, the formatting's pretty much just as it was in Logos. Not quite as convenient as just hitting send to Kindle in the Logos app, but nonetheless um, still um, a relatively simple way uh, to get your Logos documents and Logos resources onto your Kindle device.